Okay. I feel so much better. Um, okay. Great. Well, thanks everyone for coming. Um, and welcome to my talk. We're going to talk about re architecting CouchDB secondary indexes on top of FoundationDB. Uh, hopefully, from Adam's talk, you now know that we're building CouchDB on top of FoundationDB. Um, my name is Garen. I am part of the Apache Couch, CouchDB team. I'm on the project management committee. I come from uh, South Africa, and if you like sports, especially rugby, we're the world champions. It feels amazing. I'm going to gloat about it. I'm not ashamed. Uh, and I'm a freelance developer, but the main work I do is for IBM Cloudant. Uh, IBM Cloudant, like there, I get to work on Apache CouchDB because it is the kind of the, the main underlying storage that IBM Cloudant, or main underlying database that IBM Cloudant is. So CouchDB has three main secondary indexes. It's got Mango, MapReduce, and Search. And we're going to look at all three of them and how we're actually implementing them on top of FoundationDB. So the first one we're going to look at is Mango. And Mango is very much quite inspired by MongoDB. It's a much simpler kind of querying syntax than what we have for MapReduce. And it follows the same kind of querying syntax as MongoDB. You can create indexes. You query it using the same selectors that MongoDB does. So currently in CouchDB, it's kind of just an actual like wrapper on top of CouchDB's MapReduce indexes. So every time you're making a query, we're actually using MapReduce indexes underneath and then doing some, a little bit of a wrapper layer on top of that. But when we move to FoundationDB, we want to make it its own complete uh, index. And so we've taken a bit of inspiration from the FoundationDB's document layer. And one of the big things we're really excited about when it comes to Mango is that the index updates are going to happen in the same transaction that a document update happens. So that means then that every time you do, a, if you update a document, then do a query straight afterwards in a new transaction, that whole um, index is already up to date. So we can kind of keep it updated all the time, don't have to build it in the background. The kind of basic data model of how we want to store uh, Mango indexes in um, FoundationDB looks a little bit like this. We have a section where we keep a list of all the indexes, and then we keep the, the keys that those indexes are actually storing. So the first one here is index ID1, and we're storing the keys for that one on name and age. We then also keep a build status of it, whether it's building or running, and a sequence. That sequence is from the changes feed. So what actually happens is, as much as we want to update the index in the document update transaction, if you've got an existing database that's really big, you can't immediately start using it. You actually need to build it first. So that's where we have those two fields. So we set a, the moment an index is created, we set that build status to building, and we set the sequence at the changes feed that that index was created. We then, in the background, look at all the changes feed from the beginning and build that, up, build that index up to that point. At the same time, any new doc updates that come in, we're actually indexing and adding those into the index at the same time. So the moment we've hit that sequence, in the index, uh, in, the, in the database, and building that index, sorry, as soon as we've built that um, index up to that sequence point that we've stored there, it's then ready to be used, and we can change it to a running. How we store the fields is very kind of st straightforward. We, the first part of the, the key is the index ID, then the actual keys that we're storing for that database, and that's how we use it to query it, and we store the document ID as well, so that we can for Mango indexes, we always, in most cases, return the document as well. So we can fetch all those items out of the key in, that we stored in FoundationDB and fetch the document and return it to the user. Now, one of the big things we've had to look at, and it applies to map indexes as well, is the actual ordering. FoundationDB does a byte string ordering of your keys and stuff. CouchDB has kind of its own prior history and own way of storing things, and it's got this thing called view collation. So that's how to be orders of things, and it orders its keys, and it kind of looks like this, where you've got special fields, so null, false, and true always come first. Then you've got numbers, one, two, and three, and you'll notice that we don't differentiate between integers, floats, and doubles. We've got strings, arrays, and objects. So whenever you have anything stored in index, it needs to be ordered in this way. So we needed to adjust the way we store keys so that in FoundationDB so that we would get this actual ordering. And the way we've solved that is that every time we store a key, 
we actually create a tuple. And the first part of the tuple is just a number that sets it as what it is in terms of whether it's a special or numbers, and it then starts to order it. The second part of the tuple is then the actual, whether it's a special or a numbers, and it's the original key. With strings, we go another step further. Uh, with strings, we actually use the ICU um, locale library to store strings and order them. So with foundation DB, what we've actually then do is we do a, um, we create a sort string. So every time we've got string keys, we run it through the ICU library, creates a sort string, and use that sort string to store it in foundation DB. So now let's look at map reduce indexes. Map reduce indexes are created like this. What we do is we create a design document, and in that design document, you create a view. Uh, so map reduce indexes are also kind of called views. In this case, we have a map function, and we emit something. So you can see there we're emitting the, an array, and that is the key. We're emitting a class and a name, and then the value of one. Uh, we also then define a reduce function, uh, reduce function as well. In this case, we're using one of the Couch we built in reduce functions called count. It's also possible to create your own um, JavaScript reduce functions, but we really try and discourage that because most people, it's, it's really difficult to get right. Once you've created this design doc like this and saved it into Couchsby, Couchsby would then build your index. And the process looks a little bit like this, where it reads from the changes feed, fetches all the documents that it needs to put into this index, runs those um, documents through the JavaScript query server. From the JavaScript query server, we get a bunch of key values. Those key values are then stored in FoundationDB. So because of this process and because we have to always send all the documents to the JavaScript query server, we can't actually do this in the actual document update transaction, and it actually has to run in the background. So I'll show you how we do that just now. How we store, what we're storing in FoundationDB looks a little bit like this, where we store the index ID in, to start off with, and then we store the keys, so in this case, the, the name and a, an age. Uh, and we do the same encoding process I talked about with Mango. We saw the document ID, and then in the value side, which is everything in red there, we store the keys again. So once we've encoded the keys for FoundationDB to get the correct sorting, we actually can't decode it back to get the exact same keys that the users actually put in. So we store those keys then in the actual value side of FoundationDB. Um, along with the, the value. So every time we do a query, we fetch those values and return both of those back to the user. Now, with um, MangoDB, every time, uh, with, sorry, with Mango indexes, every time we update the index, because we're doing it in that document update transaction, we can fetch the old documents, look at its keys that are put into the index, remove those old keys, look at the new document that's being updated or added into the database, and add the new keys into the index. So we can do that in that one transaction. But with MapReduce, because it's being built in the background, we can't do that. We can't fetch the old full document body. So we have to keep another thing called what we call an ID index. And the ID index keeps a list of the keys for a specific document that are added to an index. So every time we update an existing index, we look at the ID index for the old set of keys that this document has contributed to this index, remove those out of the index, get the new keys, add those into the index, and add those into the ID index as well. And that's how we keep, it track, uh, keep track of it. So how do we build it? So in a traditional Couchby 2 and Couchby 3, every time we're building, every time we have a query for a view, it's that we have a coordinating node, and that goes and contacts each of the nodes in the cluster, and those nodes then look at each shard for this view, update that shard, and updates the view, sends all the results back to the, the coordinate, coordinating node, uh, which then collates it and returns it back to the client. Now, the, the big thing with this is that each node has to have a lot of state. It has to know how many nodes in the cluster, where all the shards are, and which nodes those are, and have to do, as kind of Adam mentioned earlier, there's a lot of scatter-gather kind of situation there. So we want to avoid, avoid that with FoundationDB and move to a situation where each um, node actually doesn't know how many nodes in the system and that all the state is actually moved into FoundationDB. So this gives us the power of being able to add and remove nodes if you want to. If you're in a situation like you're using Kubernetes, you can add 
uh, nodes if the cluster's under a heavy load, and then remove them if later you don't need them. And so a great example of how we're moving all the state into Foundation DB is CouchDB jobs. Now, CouchDB jobs is a global queue for background jobs. And all of its state is kept in Foundation DB, so the whole queue and the status of everything is in Foundation DB, which means we can spin up multiple workers. These workers spin up, they connect through the CouchDB jobs API, and they see what jobs they can work on and build the index. What's also nice then is through um, Foundation DB again as well, we can monitor for failed jobs. So if a worker hasn't updated its state in, Couch, in Foundation DB for a set number of time, it means that job has failed. We put that work, that job item back in the Foundation DB queue, in the Couch Jobs queue there, and another worker can pick it up and continue working on it. Along with that, we've also added uh, PubSub progress. So anything that needs to know how a job is progressing can listen in and get uh, feedback on that and know when it's ready. So how we want to work with Foundation DB is we have a view query comes in that immediately puts a job on the background queue, which will then build the index and get it up to date so it's up to this latest state. At that point, so a worker will accept that job, build the view up, and keep reporting a status back to the view query node. That node will then know that the view is up to date, query the Foundation DB, and return the results back to the user. And this is one of the sections where we still got a little bit of work around optimizing it and improving it. So it's always that trade-off. With um, original CouchDB, because each index was split into shards, we could build the whole view in parallel and build it really quickly. But now, because we're using a single key value storage in Foundation DB, at the moment, we're kind of building the index all in one step, one at a time. So our building is a little bit slower, but our querying is significantly faster now with Foundation DB. So that's one of the areas we are going to definitely look to, to improve in the, the near future. So now let's look at reduce indexes. So reduce indexes allow us to aggregate the map index results. So if you've got a map index that returns something like that where you've got some dates, the reduce uh, allows you to aggregate them based on your group level. Now, group level is how, at what value in the array that you've got. So in this case, you've got three items in the array, so the group level is three. If you set it to a group level of two, you can see we can start aggregating on year and month. Set the group level to one, and you're aggregating on year. So as I said, reduce allows for aggregation of map results. And we support two different ways. We do built-in reduce functions that CouchDB has, and then you can also use custom JS functions. Now, one of the things with reduce is that it relies heavily on the fact that internally CouchDB is using a B tree to store your index. So every time what we do in CouchDB is that when you store a whole lot of map key values, you're actually storing them in the, in the, 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 the non leaf nodes, we're actually storing aggregations of the results below. So every time we do a reduce query, we don't actually have to go right down to the leaf nodes, pull those all out, reduce them in real time, and return the results. We can actually look at higher non-leaf nodes and get those values out and return them, which means that the result is a lot quicker to query it and a little bit more efficient. But now, moving to Foundation DB, we don't have a B tree anymore, so we have to try and adapt that way of querying to work in Foundation DB. And so the way we, we think it's going to work is we're going to use a skip list. So the skip list is idea comes off the record layer's ranked index uh, design. And how a, a skip list works is you have multiple levels. So level naught, you have all of your reduced results. And each level above, you have a reduced set of those. So say at level one, you have a reduce set and it kind of reduces less and less results higher up. Each time a, a key value is not added to a level, it is then aggregated with the previous results, meaning that we start getting that aggregation. So when you want to do a query for a reduce um, index, we don't have to go right down to level naught to query the whole index. We can actually kind of start higher up and get a certain number of key values before jumping down if needed, which again we're hoping is going to make it kind of same kind of efficient query like what we have with our B tree design at the moment. Finally, we have text search. 
So with CouchDB 3, which will be our next release and the final release before we do um, the found Foundation DB release, is going to have text search. Now, Cloudant has had it for quite a while, and, and we have open sourced it, but it's never been an official part of a release with Apache CouchDB. So from 3 onwards, it's going to be that, which is quite nice. And it follows a very similar design to the MapReduce indexes. You create a JavaScript function. You say what you want to add to the text indexes and what you want to use to query. And internally, we're actually using Lucene. So under the hood, we have Lucene manages the specific shards for the whole text index, and we kind of manage those. And that's worked pretty well, but moving to FoundationDB, we didn't want to have to have that same situation where we've got FoundationDB for everything and then got Lucene to manage our text search uh, text search and having to manage those shards and everything where we kind of want foundation D db to manage everything so the idea we've come up with and the design we're doing is that we still using lucene but we kind of cut out a bit and use we implement the directory layer so instead of actually writing the text indexes to disk we actually now using the directory layer actually writes to foundation db we then add some extra optimizations on top of that we have some Java nodes that we run multiple Java nodes that store the indexes in memory. So every query will go to specific nodes that have that index in memory, uh, which then makes querying significantly faster. And we also use it um, for building an index so it can be built in memory and queried. Again, uh, Cassidy Jobs is also used to build the index. So the current status of where we're at, Adam gave a nice kind of list of all the, the features we've implemented. Um, but we still very much, the Kashmir layer has just begun. Um, we're still kind of perfecting and learning where we can improve and, and learning how to think in a foundation DB way instead of our traditional way of solving our problems. And everything we're doing, because it's all open source, you can follow along completely. So you can get the source code from the uh, Apache Kashmir repo. We also write RFCs for everything we've, I've talked about today. So if you're interested in any of the ways we've done it, we've got a much more detailed RFC which really dives into how we're implementing everything. And that's in our documentation repo. And please uh, join our mailing lists or we've got a Slack channel as well where we talk about all of this. So if you're interested in any of this, please join us. It's great to get some new ideas and um, new people getting involved and sharing how we build this all together. And so thank you. Thank you for coming to the talk. And I also want to just say a big thank you to the KashiB community. It's been really fun working with everyone as we build this all out. And uh, it's a really nice community to be part of. So thanks a lot. <laughs>